All right, first and foremost, I want to give all the honors and the praises and the glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Mohavakar Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahabashai, in who I reverence and honors the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few. The very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. All right. I'm just going to flow with this lesson. All right. And we're going to start off on Psalms 1. Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right. So a council would be a gathering, an assembly. So even when you wake up to this truth, we want to make sure that Yahabashai situates us with the right people, right? Just like in the churches, that's a multitude of ungodly people, right? Now, have you got those in the churches that will come out of the churches and wake up to the truth of Yahabashai? Yes. Have you got those in synagogues, in camps that will come out of the synagogues and wake up to Yahabashai? Yes. So this is what the scripture is talking about. That man will be blessed. He's able to increase you. Okay. Yahweh is able to increase those that are able to separate. Right. But ultimately it's Yahweh that does that. Not in a council of the ungodly. Because you may be around men that are very deceitful. Right. Their minds ain't right towards Yahweh. Which would make them ungodly. Nor standing in the way of sinners. Nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. All right. And a scorner is basically like a scoffer. A scorner is someone that scoffs at and scorns at the Bible. Why? Because they don't believe. But his delight is in the Lord, the Lord you have a shy. That's our delight. And in his law, that he meditate day and night. So this is what we're supposed to meditate upon. The law day and night. Okay. So we went to that Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. Go to, I quickly want to go to Proverbs 29. He that being often, often reproved, hardeneth in his neck. Right? So someone's constantly reproving you. You're just saying, yeah, yeah, or nodding your head. Bro, this is serious. And reproof can come by anybody. Yahavashai can use anybody to show you something. This, 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 you, we have to be spiritual in this walk. He can use anyone. But it really takes discernment and Yahweh to be dealing with you to know, well, that's what he's trying to show me there. Often reproved. Harden if his neck. So there's men, they harden their necks. They will say, yeah, yeah, can't, can I'm listening. But it goes in one ear and right out the other. Is there any changes? No changes. You just that same man. Shall suddenly be destroyed. Right? So when you're warning a brother, it's because you don't want him to be destroyed. So when you're telling him, Alright, you're eating pork, have you stopped? Right? You're asking him, has he stopped eating pork out of love? Not to destroy him, because if he carries on eating it but claims to be in the truth, what's going to happen? It's going to be destroyed. Have you stopped committing adultery? Right? All these things. Because these are the things that destroy what your soul. It's, it's what comes from comes within and comes out that destroys you. And that's without remedy. You've got to be able to take correction. Doesn't matter who it's from. All this rubbish about I'm old enough to be his father. So flipping what? But are you spiritually mature? Because guess what? You can have a brother that's younger than you. I don't care. Eight years younger than you. 20 years younger than you. But Yahweh has raised them up in the spirit. And he's over you. Doesn't matter. I don't care how old you are. That's that immaturity. That's you being very carnal. See the scriptures teach you to be a spiritual man. And not carnal. Not look at the things through worldly perspective. But a spiritual perspective. Wasn't Jeremiah young? And he had to go to the kings and priests. 
and let them know what was going to happen. Then Babylon, the Assyrians were coming to destroy, destroy what Israel. This whole thing about oh you're too young, you can't tell me. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's pride. Because you're looking at things with your fleshy eyes. We've got to be spiritual, man. Jump to verse Proverbs 28 and 25. He that is proud of heart stirreth up strife. And you don't want to be doing that. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Fat with what? Wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But that only comes through the trust. Trust intertwine that word with faith. Verse 26. He that trusts him in his own heart is a fool. Right? So when we get put in these different type of situ situations, what do we do? We trust in Yahweh. We don't trust in our own heart. Well, uh, what's your what's your opinion? I want to know what you think. No, we don't do that. Right? We trust in Yahweh, not our own hearts. And what is that pride? When you ask these people, who do they believe in? Who would they say, I believe in myself? Okay, it's alright to believe in you. All right, it's alright to believe in yourself in terms of the ability that you have has given you where you're confident. But when people say, I believe in myself, you know, like that's that new age, do as thy will, pride, prideful spirit, right? Do we need self-belief? Yeah, but that self-belief first comes from your Havashai, believing in your Havashai, then he gives you that what? Self-belief, right? And he that trusts his own heart, is a four, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. So we got to continue walking wisely, right? And who directs us to walk wisely? You have a shy. Because if it was up to our own minds, whew, Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful. Who could know it? So if you were to just, all right, well, I trust in myself, I lean on my own understanding, bro, you'd make a hell of a lot of mistakes, right? We need, look, only Yahweh Shai can help us with what we go through. It's not going to be by your own might. There's many people that think they can do things by their own might. No, you can't. Remember, humble yourself, no man. And that's the problem. That's the problem. And you may have a brother standing right next to you. Let, letting you know. Bro, what are you doing? You just done your video. What are you talking about? Men claim to treasure the truth. You know, I treasure the truth. I already want to do more. Well, where, where's your videos at? Where, where's your videos? Where have you been? Don't fool yourself. Be real. you got brother standing right next to you telling, telling you what it is. And you still want to harden your heart. That's why two thirds, two thirds are going to have to go off because... They're in the way, and the wicked of they're in the way, you know. And these were them same spirits that always had a problem with you have a shy or something that was being said by the prophets. They always had a problem. I don't like his speech. I don't like the way he dresses. Bear me just a minute. It's time to grow up. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter three. I'm going to jump straight to verse 9. They that put their trust in him, in Yahweh Shai, shall understand the truth. So with you actually trusting in Yahweh Shai, what's he going to do? Start revealing himself to you more and more and more. And you were going to understand. Knowing is one thing. Right? Just like the black unconscious community. I know this. I know that. It sounds good, isn't it? You know? Bro, we're not, we're not here to show off what we know. You can know a whole load of things, but are you applying any of these things in real time? In these situations, are you applying these scriptures? That's the difference between someone that's efficient in the word and someone that's not efficient in the word. Someone that has knowledge can just show you and talk about this and it sounds good. But true knowledge, right? true wisdom is um, knowledge that is put into practice. That's true wisdom, knowledge which which is applied, right? Which is what practical. And they that trust in him shall understand the truth. So you're gonna understand Yahweh Shai, right? 
the reason why you can't understand your house because you're not putting your trust in him and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him right? so we've got to remain faithful in the love yeah the love in your house shall and love in your brother as thyself with him for grace and mercy is to his saints you hear that grace and mercy are to his saints who are the saints you so-called negroes hispanics and indianos and he have care for his elect he has very 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 great care for his elect verse 10 but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations see it all comes back round again the ungodly were going to be punished according to their own imaginations what they think you know oh, i want to know your opinion i want to know what you think i don't want to hear the bible that's a red light right there so you want me to tell you what I feel. It's not about what I feel. It's about what the scriptures say. Which have neglected the righteous. Right? And forsaken the Lord. Why? Right? Because they want to lean on their own understanding. What they think is right. For wisdom despises. For whoso despises wisdom. Check this out. And nurture. So the wisdom is to nurture us. Excuse me just a minute. If we can find that word. Nurture. Habakasha. Nurture. Excuse me just a minute. Nourish, nurture. Oh, here it is. To bring up, to cultivate. Right? Even if you have a particular tree, some of you brothers may have a garden or whatever. Or a plant. What do you do? What do you have to do with that plant every now and then? You have to cultivate it. Right? Maybe a little leaf or a twig going brown. You cultivate, you you cut it off so the rest what can bloom. Right? To educate, to feed, to look after, nourish, nurse, tent. So we're being brought up. Right? You bring up a child. What do you have to do with that child? You have to nurture it in the right ways. So whosoever despiseth, right, wisdom and nurture, he's miserable. So those that despise Yahweh of Hashem and wisdom and so, so forth, what's going to happen? Of course they're going to be miserable. So this sums up why most people, not all, are miserable. Because they despise the wisdom of the scriptures, which is supposed to make them somewhat joyful. And their hope is vain. So most people, they have these vain hopes, they, these aspirations. It's vain. Because they're still miserable. Their labors are unfruitful. And their works are unprofitable. Their wives are foolish and their children wicked. And their offspring is cursed. <laughs> Wherefore, blesses the barren that is undefiled and which have not known a sinful bed. She shall have the fruit in the visitation of souls. And blessed is the Enoch, which with his hands have wrought no iniquity. Enoch is someone that's, um, that don't have no woman. Right? Right? Male frustrated. Yeah. That's what Enoch is, castrated, doesn't have no woman, right? Because he's dedicated unto what? The temple. Not imagined wicked things against the Most High, for unto him shall be given the special gift of faith and an inheritance in the temple of the Lord, more acceptable, acceptable to mind, right? So with this, I don't even know what I want to call this lesson, but I hope this was edifying. When this correction come in your way, it doesn't matter who it's, um, who it's from. If it applies to you, take it on board and know that's your Havashai. And you've got to trust that's your Havashai speaking for that individual to tell you something. Right? And separate yourself from the ungodly, the council of the ungodly. Until next time, Shalom.